This is one of the most expensive items that we've ever handled at Acoustic Collectibles. Today we're going to be speaking about it for a few moments just to show you how we found it, how we got the best price for it, and what did we do to finalize the sale. Let's get this video started. So this is a $1,000 note from 1934 from the Chicago branch. It's graded PMG 65 EPQ. The way that we ran into this note was that a shop had it hanging out, just sitting out raw for someone to buy. No one ever came into the shop to want to buy it raw. And what they did was they sent it to PMG and it came back 65. It's kind of interesting that sometimes, uh, you know, we undervalue a coin or a piece of paper and then when we send it in, sometimes it exceeds expectations. Most times it doesn't, but sometimes it does. So for them, when it came back 65 EPQ, that's a really awesome, awesome return. And the reason being is because if you look up the Freebird number of 2212 and you go to the Chicago branch, the last one that sold in this grade sold for $21,600. So what we did was when it came back from grading from them, we picked it up and we actually went to a few dealers and we went to a few uh, you know, personal collectors and asked them what the best price they could do for it. We just used that auction comp of 21.6 and after a while we ended up getting the best price for it and then we sold it. So it's just a really interesting note. Uh, most of the time when you handle thousand dollar notes, they're going to be in a very low grade and a lot of collectors end up wanting that lower grade just because it's the note. It takes that space out of, you know, the set that they're building, but there are really intricate collectors out there that want to buy the best. And this one definitely is up there with the best. And so just a stunning note. So happy that we were able to hold it and work with it for a short amount of time. But who knows, maybe in the future we'll be handling more notes like this and get to share them with you guys. So something that you should really be getting good at as a coin dealer is studying the market and having a pulse on the market and what it's demanding for certain items. And that has to do with also reaching out to your network and your base. So we have collectors, we have people that run auction houses, then we have coin dealers. All these people we can rely on on a weekly basis to give us information on what they would pay for certain items. So in this case, say that you're selling a thousand dollar bill and a thousand dollar bill someone's willing to give you, you know, a 10% margin on it. So you paid, you paid 5,000, someone's willing to give you 5,500 for that item. And sometimes it sounds like a great opportunity. You know, I get my money back, I make 10%, and it all sounds good. But as time rolls on, what you should be doing is looking out and seeing who is willing to pay more. Maybe that guy that paid 5,500 before wasn't the strongest buyer in this case for the new bill that you got in. So say that you got a bill in for 5,000 again, and now you know five people and they buy paper constantly. So you reach out to a few of them, one pays 5,500, one pays 5,700, and one pays six grand, and the other two maybe not be interested. What we're trying to say is, is that if you have a bigger network, most of the time you end up making more money on an item, especially if it's rare. So as you progress as a coin dealer, try to look around, try to hear you know, what people are buying, what they want to pay for certain items, you know, and then after a while, you start to make more and more money on the items that people are constantly after, like $1,000 bills, $500 bills, key date Morgans, key date peace dollars, and the whole bunch. So start to acquire that skill, start to move more towards networking, and you really start to make a little bit more money as time goes on, and it'll accumulate into a big snowball, which will really help your business. So let's move from that now and let's show you guys some of our newest purchases that we just got in. We try to make these available for you every single video so that you get first shot at them, but let's get to those coins right now. All right guys, so the first coin I wanna show you in today's video is this 1807 Drape Bust Half for a VF20 by PCGS. Mostly original look, has some nice kind of undertones to the coin, purple and blue. And you flip it over, it's got that same type of character to it. Just a really nice, gorgeous type coin. Up next is this 1957. I'm pretty sure it's called a 5 rupee. I don't know why we bought this coin, but it came in a lot. And we wanted to kind of show it off. Show off the true views on AcousticCollectibles.com. Rever the reverse of this coin is my favorite. It just has a bunch of ele elephants and animals on it. 
and I don't know, I thought it was a neat coin, especially if someone's trying to buy something off the wall, and something that's actually pretty affordable as well. I have a few lightly toned coins. This is 1889 Morgan Dollar, graded AU55. Kind of has like a violet, pink, and red to it. And a little bit of a blue or purple on the reverse. Then we have this 1881 O. Had a collector send these in and probably had, you know, a little, they learned a little bit about grading. Um, some of these just didn't grade very high, but still pretty neat to get some trivies on them and offer them to you guys. But no, I did not send those coins in. Then we have this 1938S Texas Commemorative Half. Feels like Texas is one of the most famous commemoratives of the series. People just love it. And, uh, you know, it's one of the biggest states, so completely understand that. Nice blast white coin. Graded Mint State 65 by NGC. A little bit of a tougher uh, date in the series of Texas commemorative halves, so that's why we tried to pick it up. It is 1904 O Morgan Dollar, graded Mint State 63. Nice little rattler. Problem-free surfaces mostly, just a kind of a soft strike. Then we have this 1883 Philly Morgan Dollar. It's graded Mint State 63 also. A little bit of a tougher date to find, even though it's pretty common for uh, for the pop report. But decent little coin in a rattler. And the last Morgan Dollar in a rattler is this 1883 O. Definitely has some great luster to it. Just a few bigger hits in front of the face there, but people were buying these up like crazy last week, and that's why we wanted to order a few more that we ended up finding. Then we have this 1886 Morgan Dollar Grade Mint State 62. A little bit of rim tone to the coin, nice character. I think they beat up the coin a little bit in terms of grade, but that's okay. There's not a big jump from 62 to 63. Then we have a coin that you don't normally see. This is a 1903S uh, Philippines Peso. And it's great at AU58. Still has some nice luster to the coin. Just, just has some uh, you know general wear from it being circulated. And I don't know, it's just a decent cool looking coin. I want to get a little bit more into coins like this just because there is a market for them. But thank you guys for taking a look at all of these new purchases. Thank you guys for spending some time with us today as we showed you the $1,000 bill and our new purchases. Leave a comment down below of what your thoughts are. Make sure to leave a like on this video and make sure to subscribe because we're coming out with videos every single week just telling you about what we're doing with coins and paper money. But we'll see you guys in the next video.